If you want to see God's power in life, you have to enter into a battle. And to enter into a battle means that you need, it's required to have the attitude of a soldier. Why are there so many civilians and so few soldiers in the church today? You're watching a session from Steiger's online intensive training. This event was recorded with live translation, so you'll notice some cuts throughout the video to make it easier for you to view it. The speaker for this video is David Pierce, who is the founder of Steiger International. We hope that this is a useful tool for you. Enjoy the conversation. So some years ago, I was in Iraq and I was with uh, my two sons, Aaron and Ben, and uh, we were going to do some creative evangelism there. So some people, they go fishing, you know, when they're with their sons, they go fishing or they you know, do that kind of stuff. We go to Iraq and we preach. And so I wanted to know how you could do that. And I was meeting with the church planner. And so he said, yeah, I'm a, I, I've plant churches in Iraq. And so when I go out to plant churches, I have, uh, I wear a bulletproof vest. I carry a machine gun and then I have two bodyguards with machine guns. And so I'm listening to this and I'm thinking we're going to be in these, these open city squares and we're not going to have any machine guns. And we're not nope. going to have any bodyguards. And so I was I was praying to God before we started. And I'm saying, God, we don't have any bodyguards. We don't have any machine guns. Where are my bodyguards? And I was asking God about this. And I felt like he said to me, David, you can have that if you want. Or you can have me. I will be your protection. I will be your bodyguard. And so despite all the people telling us you can't preach publicly in Iraq, it won't work. You can't do it. We jumped off the cliff and we did it. And it was amazing. So many young men raising their hands publicly praying out loud and asking Jesus into their life. It was unbelievable. There is no one more powerful than Jesus. One time I was meditating on what the angel told Mary when she found out she was going to be the mother of Jesus. And Mary said, but that's impossible. I've never been with a man. How can I be the mother of Jesus? And the angel said to Mary, with God, nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. I need a revelation of this deep inside of my heart. I need to understand what it says in Ephesians 1.18, that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to me and to every single person on this Zoom call right now. But I also need to know that it's going to be a fight. We will not change anything without a fight. But the good news is that the battle belongs to the Lord. Romans 8 31. What should we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 37, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And a conqueror is a military term. It means that we have complete victory over someone if we conquer them. But Paul is making the point that when we are Jesus followers, we are more than conquerors. No one on this Zoom call is just called to survive. You're not just called to make it from one week to the next. We are called to change the world. Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, 3, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Why did Paul tell Timothy that he needed to be a soldier? Well, I think the reason is this. You can't win a war with a bunch of civilians and we are in a war. I mean, I don't have to tell many of you that. You know this is true. I mean, we have this terrible evil war in Ukraine. So many of our family are right now living in this reality of, of, this, of this destruction and these bombs and just terrible things that are happening right now in, with our family in Ukraine. We have the destruction of, of relationships and families, the brokenness that we see everywhere in the world, everywhere that we go. Generations raised on violent pornography, lack of meaning, loneliness, suicide. We, we were in Mexico on tour recently and they have a suicide epidemic in in, in Mexico with young people. But this isn't just in Mexico, it's everywhere in the world today. Social unrest, economic crisis. Who's going to save us? There's no human answer. That's why we cannot look to ourselves or to our own strategies, but yes. we need a Jesus movement. We need to wake up. 
It's like I can be asleep and I cannot be aware of what's going on all around me. My neighborhood can be burning and I can be just not even seeing it. And I believe Jesus wants to open our eyes. He wants to take the blindness away from my from me. He wants to open my eyes and he wants to call me. He wants to call you to enter the battle. One of the things I've been feeling so much of, one of the things I've been asking for this whole year is, is to see more of God's power. I need more of God's power. And I was, I can remember some years ago when we were on tour in Turkey and I was in the ancient ruins of Ephesus. And so then I wanted to read what it was like when the apostle Paul was in Ephesus. And it says in Acts 19, verse 11 and 12, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So even the handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Can you imagine being so filled with the presence of God that people would take you know, pieces of your clothing and they would go and touch people and they'd be healed. And, and then I'm, I'm reading this and I felt like God spoke to me and I felt like God said to me, David, Paul was not some guy, some supernatural guy floating in the air. He was somebody like you. He, you know, he was, he was not supernatural. Paul was a man. He was a normal man, but he was willing to pay the price. He was willing to give it all. He was willing to be a soldier because God was moving in great power through Paul. But then a riot broke out in the city and he had to escape with his life. Because when you dare to proclaim Jesus outside of the church, you confront spiritual powers. And that's why if you want to see God's power in life, you have to enter into a battle. And to enter into a battle means that you need, it's required to have the attitude of a soldier. Why are there so many civilians and so few soldiers in the church today? Why are the majority of the people in the church today civilians? Why is it that I can have this civilian mindset. God, you know, this is the civilian mindset. God, I want to do this for you. These are my plans. Bless them. God, keep me secure. God, make things as easy as possible. I am in the center and God is there to bless me and to do what I ask him to do. I think the biggest opposition to the calling that God has put on my life comes from those voices. Those voices that say to me, be reasonable. Be smart, be secure, just try and get a good job if you can. That's what you need to do. I think today there are many people leaving their faith in Jesus, not because it was too hard, but instead it was because the Jesus presented to them was too easy. The Jesus presented to them was this soft, powerless hippie guy who asked nothing from me but the real jesus the real jesus is not on a cross anymore the real jesus he is someone who raised from the dead who holds the universe together with his power who's above every principality every power every political system he is somebody worthy of my life he is somebody worth dying for when i have a revelation of this jesus i cannot live like a salt, like a civilian, I can't do it. This Jesus compels me to take risks, to risk it all. This Jesus makes me have the mindset of a soldier and I open my eyes and I see the world as it is. One thing for sure is that civilians don't inspire anybody. I am not inspired by civilians. And one thing I don't want to have on my gravestone when I die and they put me in, you know, in the grave and they have a, if they have a gravestone, I don't want on my gravestone. Here lies David. He went on lots of holidays. He went shopping a lot and he avoided difficulties. Are you kidding me? You don't want that either, do you? So then the real question I have to ask myself is, am I a civilian or a soldier? You see, soldiers are under orders. They're not telling Jesus, I want to do this for you. I want to live like this. Or they don't do that. Soldiers say, Here I am. You are the commanding officer. Tell me what you want me to do. I'll do anything you want me to do. No limits, no negotiations. Civilians run from the battle. Soldiers run into the battle. Soldiers take Holy Spirit-led risks. Many years ago when God called Jody and I to Amsterdam, we felt like God wanted us to start a ministry there to reach all the so many of the young people who had a negative idea of God in Amsterdam. And so for two years, we we poured ourselves out and we tried to reach 
the pe- the young people in Amsterdam. Finally, we were able to start a little a little Bible study in our apartment. Just okay. a small group of us. I don't know how many, 10, 15 people. I, I don't know exactly. No. After two years of pouring ourselves out. And then all of a sudden, I got this sharp pain in my stomach. Next thing I knew, I was in the hospital. The little Bible study that we had worked two years to get started was gone. The couple that, the, that were like our right hand, you know, our friends who were working with us, they abandoned us. My wife, Jody was with our two at that time, our Aaron and Ben, but they were little, they were babies. And I was lying in the hospital. The doctors told Jody, my wife, that I could die at any moment. I felt so weak. I felt like my, I was melting into my pillow and I was laying there and I was so weak. And while I was in that condition, I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I felt like he said, David, are you going to quit? Are you going to quit? And I was so weak. I spoke it out loud, but it was kind of a whisper because I was so weak. I said, God, if I don't die, if you let me uh, out of this hospital and there's nobody else, I don't care if it's just me and Jody and our two little boys, I'm not going to quit. If you give me the strength, I'm going to obey you. And God restored my health. And I got out of that hospital and Steiger was born in Amsterdam. Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world, you will have trouble, but be courageous. Yes. I have overcome the world. I can remember I was, again, we were, uh, we were doing a lot in, in, in Russia and I was in Moscow and I was really, I just, I was talking to God. I was in Moscow and I'm saying, God, I, I, I need to be alone. I just want to be alone and cry. I just wanted to spend the whole day alone. And it wasn't because I was so tired and I was really tired. And it wasn't because I missed my family because I really, really missed my family. But I wanted to cry because I was so grateful. I was so overwhelmed by the amazing privilege it is to be in the battle, to be a soldier. God, I don't deserve this. I don't. Why do I get to do things like this? I'm so grateful. The greatest privilege, the greatest thing you can do with your life Neither. is to be a soldier. Don't die in a, in a bad die in the battle. Jesus said there's a wide road that leads to destruction okay, and a yeah, narrow road that leads to life. Why well, believe as a follower of Jesus, there's a wide road and, then, and there's a narrow road. Awesome. And you can take the wide road. And God loves you. Yes. He doesn't love me for what I do. He doesn't okay. love me more if I'm you know, helping if I'm working with poor people in India or if I'm working in a bank in in America, he doesn't love me for what I do. Loves me because he loves me. But I believe God says this to us, David, there's another road that you can take. This is a narrow road. This road is going to be difficult. This road is going to require everything. Take this road. This is the road of no regret. This is the road full of passion. You see, we were created for battle. I can enjoy things. I, I can enjoy going out for a nice meal. I walk on the beach. I can enjoy life, but I don't live for the, these things. This is not what I live for. This is not what is what motivates me. And this is not what motivates you either. Because you were created for battle. You were created for significance. You were created for meaning. You were made and I was made to be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. God wants to use you to change the world. But you can't be a civilian. You have to be a soldier. God is calling you to say yes to him to penetrate the darkness with the light of Jesus, to let the new move, the new, this new Jesus movement all over the world that we so desperately need to see, to let this Jesus movement begin with us. So if you're, I don't know, if you're in this Zoom room and you feel like this message was for you, then I want you to raise your hand with me now. Just put your hand up. And then I want you to just pray this in your own language to God with me right now. He sees you. Here I am, Father. You know me. I know I'm not impressive. You know that I I can't do anything in my own power. But here I am. You say there's a great harvest and there are few workers. But look, here I am. Send me. Empower me. I want to be a soldier. I want to boldly preach your love to this dying world. And don't let me forget what you've said to me during this time. Jesus' name. Thanks for watching this session from Steiger's online intensive training. Want to watch more? Click here for the next video.